Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we will be looking at some Linux news. Welcome, welcome everyone. We're exploring the wonderful world of Linux in this week's latest news. We got some exciting news and topics to cover this week so we'll be jumping right in. All right, welcome everyone to the stream. Thank you for stopping in again and stopping by. Uh, just getting some things squared away here in the final moments, trying to get a uh, virtual machine running. I've been having a little bit of issues, but I think we're well and alive at this point. So the first thing to talk about, we'll jump right in. Zorin OS introduces Zorin 16 Beta, which is set to be released in the coming months. You can check out their blog post on their website at blog.zorin.com. This will probably re be released somewhere in mid to early summer. They're boasting quite a few improvements, including an improved desktop ex experience. Let's check out the blog first here, and then we'll actually run the beta ourselves and look over a few things. See a few familiar faces already. Say hi in the chat as you're joining in on this Linux news segment. Let me know if you can hear everything okay. All right, so it says, we're thrilled to finally share our next giant leap with the release of Zorin OS 16 beta today. They paid close attention to feedback from the users and they're introducing a stunning new look as we see here. R rounded edges seems to be going the way of uh, all operating system desktops nowadays, but uh, they're, they're doing the same thing here. <laughs> It looks uh, kind of more towards the look of what the latest Mac OS Big Sur is offering up. Uh, somewhat more mobile friendly. It's an interesting take on things. It looks quite beautiful, especially with that mountain backdrop on the wallpaper. They did a great job on the wallpaper. <laughs> and not to mention they now have dynamic wallpaper that's another trend too, coming directly from Mac OS. As the day progresses, the beautiful background progresses as well. A new blurred desktop experience when you're logging in. You see the background of the desktop wallpaper blurred in. Of course, this has been released in other desktop environments before. Probably most notably GNOME Desktop. They've, they did this a few versions of Go where they offer you the, bla uh, the blurred desktop fast and smoother performance that's what we would expect we wouldn't expect it to get any slower so that's great they are boasting though a larger app library and they're trying to say that it is the biggest app uh really repos available um out of the box in any other open source desktop ever so Right here, Zorin OS 16 has the largest library of apps available out of the box of any other open source desktop ever. So that's quite interesting. Uh, if you want to, of course, get applications to their store, I guess that's pretty nice. I don't know how I feel about, you know, them including Flathub in the Snap Store and and boasting that they are uh, the most ex expansive a library of applications available out there, but that's fine. I mean, you can always add in your own repos, so not a big deal there. Uh, it looks like they upgraded there. Well, maybe they haven't, but you can at least tell where things are coming from. This does look like their Snap Store, so sorry, not their Snap Store, but their uh, App Store. We'll, we'll check that out here in a moment. They have a new, easier guide with their new tour. Maybe we'll check that one out. Not sure if I can start it out or not. Let's see, navigate quicker with touchpad gestures. So the more and more uh, Linux stays around, the more mobile friendly it seems to get. So a lot of these distributions are focused on trying to become more mobile friendly. And we see it here in uh, Zorin OS as well, 16, because it has multi-touch touchpad gestures so this helps with both mobile like tablets as well as of course laptops with trackpads or touchpads uh, much like we've seen with gnome 40 they've uh, put quite a bit of emphasis on that new sound recorder app 
more customization more customizable taskbar available to us a redesigned experience and appearance so we're looking here we can change the layout the theme the interface the desktop again we'll check things out coming soon a new windows 10x like desktop layout interestingly enough 10x has kind of been put on hold by microsoft so not sure what uh, they're offering with this probably for more tablet users Hi there, Delroy. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for stopping in and stopping by. Also, if you are stopping in and stopping by at this point, if you haven't already smashed the living crap out of that like button, the YouTube algorithm needs it so that the channel can get noticed more. I noticed that only about 5% out of uh, 100 are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you haven't already and you enjoy the content, make sure to go down, smash that subscribe button and make sure to follow the channel by hitting the notification bell. All right, jelly mode. Undoubtedly the most groundbreaking revolutionary feature. This has to be a gag, I would think. Ever included, jelly mode will be fundamentally change how we use our your computer forever. Smiley face. When enabled, Windows wobble and move around the desktop and squeeze into there. So it's a little bit of fun here, a little Easter egg. It looks jelly mode. Other improvements we won't read about and how to test it. If you want to test out Zorin Core 16, make sure to download it here through the blog post. All right, we'll go right back. That's not what I wanted. All right, so keeping this blog post up, let me see if I can bring up uh, Zorin real quick. All right, Zorin popping up. That should be good. Scaling looks all right. Well, if you don't remember me, I'm Dexter. Yeah, I remember the name. It's been quite a while. Studies got in the way. Of course, life gets in the way sometimes. Uh, welcome back either way. Glad to have you back on enjoying the streams with us. All right. So uh, let's first check out what they have here. So this kind of just launches. It looks like their search bar as well as the workspaces. Very easy to access. We can launch our web browser from down here, our file manager from down here, App Store. I'm gonna exit out of this one. And as we saw, rounded edges everywhere. Everything looks good. Again, they're mimicking a little bit, uh, I, I personally think a little bit of the Big Sur concept. Everything is so rounded, white. They do have the blue kind of highlights. I do like the way they've highlighted things here. Looks fine to me. Everything sticks out. Nothing glaring on the eyes. I'm enjoying it myself, but let's check out the uh, software center. So it says it's getting flat packs. Let's see what happens if we use the super key. Allows us to get back to the same kind of launcher as the applications here. Well, not really applications, I shouldn't call it that, but kind of the search and the various different workstations, or sorry, workspaces. So kind of a workspace launch deal. While that's loading up, we'll check out on the bottom right-hand corner. We have the current time and date. Calendar looks nice, really Mac OS-like. like <laughs> um, We'll click on here, we got Clearly sound settings are wired and wireless connection. Another way to access settings as well. All right, this popped up. Kind of reminds me of the Ubuntu software center, at least the way it's laid out. Maybe they're using something similar. Let's see about the software update, software and updates. Let's see if we got software. No, that's not what I wanted. Just trying to see what repos they have available. I don't know if I can get that through here. Here we go. So canonical, community, maintain stuff, proprietary drivers, source code, other software. Okay, so here's a list of all their mirrors. They do have quite a few. Uh, some PPAs as well. So some user submitted applications or programs that you can install and download. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the big things that they boast is that they have an expansive library of 
applications available. First thing I do is move the taskbar to the top so it's less like Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things Zorin has always boasted though. They want a smooth transition between Windows users and, uh, well, Linux users. And I think that's actually one of their focuses, although they've taken this a little bit a step further to look much more different, at least, you know, in, in the feel of some of their windows, how they look. It's like, it's it's kind of a Mac OS slash, um, slash Windows look, you know? Taskbar kind of reminds me of Windows, like you're saying, but uh, some of the file browsing and uh, just some of the widgets that come onto the screen look more Mac OS, especially like Big Sur. Hello, you missed my chat. Sorry about that. Hello, what distro you're using? I'm using uh, Arch Linux with Xmonad. And uh, you can check out that setup on the channel. Make sure to check that out and smash that like button while you're at it. This looks more like a children's distro. KD looks more professional. Yeah, uh, you might get that opinion from some people. Um, Joseph, it's, I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's nice. Like you I don't want to call it a, I wouldn't say kids or children's distro. I'd more look for, let's say a beginner friendly distribution for a lot of people coming over from, you know, operating systems that, uh, well, windows and Mac OS, I think they're trying to cater towards beginners from there. All right. What else do we have here? Let's see. Let's go back to that blog post and maybe find one of these things that they're boasting. Not this, the jelly mode. First, let's do, let's see, maybe we can check out their layout. We'll bring that up. Nope, settings, maybe it's in settings. Go back, background, no. Displays, probably not. Not sure where they got that setting hidden. Zorin appearance. So it's called appearance. There we go. Found it. Zorin OS stole wobbly windows from KD. Oh, that's hilarious. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, it seems like they're meshing a lot together here. <laughs> I hate rounded corners. I hate square. <laughs> oh, you two are hilarious. You know what? I'm not, uh, I don't really care. They both look fine to me. So here are the various different layouts that we can have. I wonder if, there we go. So if you're not happy with what they got, they do offer you a few options. You know what? It's pretty seamless. I've, I think it was Manjaro that I last tried this kind of layouts deal in and it's, uh, it, it kind of it kind of broke things trying to go between the layouts. So I'm happy to see that uh, things load in quite quickly. And look at that. This looks more like uh, a GNOME experience for those GNOME users. So yeah, it seems really much like they're trying to cater towards, you know, all sorts of people coming from all sorts of different environments and operating systems. Uh, so let's toggle on that jelly mode and see what happens. Oh, wow. That's that's a little that's a little much, isn't it? <laughs> Look at this thing. No joke. It definitely wobbles. <laughs> well, if you want to have fun one night, turn on that wobbly mode and just move some windows around. Let's see what happens if we launch a new window. Nah, nothing special. I thought they would uh, quite, that that rendering really messes with it. The text becomes almost unreadable, but nonetheless, it's just a little fun there. So there you go. Joseph says they stole it directly from uh, KDE. I didn't even realize KDE had this feature. I just thought this was some kind of an Easter egg. All right, moving on. What else has Zorin done here? The new sound recorder app, we already talked about that, but we're not going to check it out. The tour, I was interested in the tour, so why not bring up the tour? And while I'm doing that, subscribe below, smash that like button right now. Let's start the Zorin tour. It tells you how to open up your apps, launch the Zorin 
appearance app, great. Installing guest editions for VirtualBox, I guess it detects that. Putting online accounts, Zorin Connect, okay, this is nice. So they do have good gesture support here. Actually, it's quite fluid. How to get more apps from the store, get started with the office suite so you can be productive, and that's it, start enjoying um, the desktop of Zorin OS. So uh, my opinion on this one, I do like the fact that they're offering some sort of tour. I think that a lot more Linux distributions need to uh, start doing this. One of my favorite tours is from, I think it's Farron. Farron does a great job of showing you around, uh, you know, what they have to offer. And personally, it's really nice for beginners, just you know, a simple little tour of what's available, maybe some applications or settings to get them started. So I really appreciate how they did that. We're at, oh, Rummit, welcome to the stream. It has been a while. Thanks for stopping in and stopping by. I appreciate it. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Mitchell. I think they're underrated too. I think uh, a lot of, I think a lot of, distributions look past it. They just assume everybody knows how to start using things right off the bat. And it's a simple click to hit X and say close, forget the tour, you know, if you're already used to it. But for the users who aren't, it'd be really nice if they could make it even more expansive. I mean, you can choose to exit out of the tour at any point. So um, like I said, Farron did a great job and I hope more and more Linux distributions continue with that. So we've already checked out a few layouts here. I honestly like this one a little more than the first layout, which looked very much like, well, Windows. Um, let's see, everything else looks about the same. Nothing changed. I like the orange color, of course. Very partial to that, as it is my favorite color. What am I missing? I don't think I'm missing anything. I think we've checked out a lot of the new features here. We've checked out the different repos available. They're touting flat hub available, great flat packs, easier to get applications and install them, a stunning new look. You know, they they boasted this stunning new look. I mean, it pretty much looks the same, in my opinion, from what Zorin's 15 had, uh, but what they've done is redesigned some of the windows for the most part. Yes, they've added in different layouts, which is great. Let me see if I can move things around on this one. I can. Great. Um, okay, it comes with uh, GIMP standard. Nice. A good variety of apps to available. Now, I don't have it fully installed, so maybe some of these would go away, but it looks like most of these would stay. Very good. If there's anything someone would like to... Is there anything different? Let's check it out. We can do that. I'm learning to build a new distro for hacking as well as make it look elegant. Should I go with Debian, Arch, or Red Hat? Personally, for customization purposes, um, I would go Arch Linux. That way you can man maintain it as something very minimal. As well as... Uh, you got a very nice access to the AUR, so the... Arch user repository, which has uh, a crazy amount of applications available. Uh, that way you keep it minimalistic, customize it however you want, and put those security tools on there to test for vulnerabil vulnerabilities. Uh, yeah, well, we can check that out. Theming, theming, theming. What was it called? Was it theming? Zorin appearance. All right, so let me check this one out. Okay, so they have... I'm pretty sure this is taken from kind of what Manjaro uses as well. I remember this one not working too well because there's supposed to be a dock here on the left side, <laughs> but uh, it's not appearing at all. So is this the standard one? Kind of looks like the standard one. What's the difference here? Okay, this is even more Windows-esque, maybe like Windows 7-esque. <laughs> uh, this is more Windows 10-esque. This I'd say is yeah, maybe a mix between Windows and Mac. And this one's more of the GNOME, what we'd find in like Ubuntu, or at least the old Ubuntu. Themes, let's put an accent color that's a little darker. 
They have backgrounds which switch between various different, uh, well, backgrounds depending on the time of day. I wonder if we just switch. Here we go. All right, we still got the wobble in effect. Sorry about that. We'll just keep that <laughs> going. Uh, no, I won't turn on the location settings at the moment, but... I we okay so you can you can make it uh, your own a little bit so they do have a uh, a dark theme let's go back to Zorin here there we go you know it's kind of a bluish color I guess that's because that's what was selected let's see what happens if we go with green so they mesh in a dark mode with whatever color you like which honestly looks terrible Unless you go with some darker tone, in my opinion. I mean, I don't like... This looks like a... The color kind of changes. It, it takes a moment to settle. So, let's see here. Red with black. We'll just keep it. We'll just keep it uh, regular old, like, gray slate with the black. And that looks kind of better. Let's launch an application now, like... Okay. Dark mode doesn't look too bad. Hopefully that uh, that shows that off a little bit, uh, Bodhi. Can we use apt package manager instead of Pac-Man? That's no the main the package manager that comes with uh, Arch Linux is is Pac-Man. Um, apt is meant to work with well, it's called Aptitude, and it's really Debian Debian and Ubuntu repositories and the PPA. So those two don't mix. But you more than likely can find everything that's available uh, with the Debian and Ubuntu repos and the PPA all in Arch and, and more, honestly. Okay, so we'll go and exit out of these. Hopefully we've explored most of the theming there. I'd like to move on from Zorin. I'll do a more expansive video in the coming days, I hope, about this. Uh, especially if people are interested, smash that like button so I know you're interested. And we'll move on to the next point of news. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Say hi in the chat if you haven't already. Are you on our Unix P Discord server? No, I'm not. Uh, I am not on there. We do have a member from our Discord server who's one of the top rated on Unix P about uh, Oxvara. Check out their X Monad setup. It's so gorgeous. You won't miss it. And then when you're ready to install it, I got a video on it you can check out. I do have my own Discord channel that I put uh, the link to in the description below. So if you want to come and join a great community of people, you can do that yourself by joining in on our Discord server and saying hi over there too. Welcome, welcome, everyone. All right, the next topic we are moving on to is going to be about the new Cosmic desktop. So Cosmic is coming to Pop OS, to a Pop OS desktop near you. Oops, don't want to click on that. Let's go back here. Of course, there we go. That's right, the June release of Pop OS 2104 will be receiving an overhaul of their desktop environment as well. Really, just think of Cosmic Desktop as a tweaked version of GNOME Desktop. Mainly, it's an extension instead of a newly designed desktop environment. And uh, really, a, it's not a complete offering from System76. Again, just think of it as something tweaked. I think the blog posts might have confused some people because I've been seeing all sorts of messages from people saying Pop OS is coming out with a brand new desktop environment. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Um, and that's going to be people who are, you know, not too familiar with their desktop environments who might be saying stuff like that. But uh, we'll check it out nonetheless. I think I got it properly installed. I've been fumbling around with that a little bit. I had to do it manually in order to get it installed, but we'll be checking it out in this stream as well. So if you're excited, let's smash that like button and start talking about the blog post first. All right. April's in full swing. Pop 2104 will release in June. Like I said, what is Cosmic? We're providing a honed desktop user 
experience in Pop OS through the GNOME-based desktop environment, Cosmic. Notice how they say through the GNOME-based desktop environment. So they call it a refined solution. Very good. We will see about that, of course, as when it comes out. Um, here's a little bit of a video that they got running. Let's see. Let's watch this real quick. So what are they showing us? They're showing us a dock at the bottom, right across the bottom of the screen. That might actually, I, I did not find this when I installed it. Instead, I think I have to move it around in order to get it to the bottom. I don't know that that's the place where they actually put it right off the beginning. We'll check it out. Workspace, workstation, ugh, workspaces and applications. I always mess that word up. So if I ever say workstations, I'm probably mean workspaces at this point. So be very well aware of that one. We've separated the activities overview into two distinct views, workspaces and applications. So we'll check that out. I do like the way they that they did that. The two didn't really blend together too well in my mind. So they kind of push those two separate from each other. As we're well aware, GNOME kind of tends to push those two mm, semi together. There's really two layers of it. You hit activities, you see your workspaces, I believe, and then you hit the applications view, and then you finally get to see your applications. But now this is all available on one screen. We'll see that in a moment. Uh, dazed, uh, Nick, what distro are you running? I'm running Arch Linux with Xmonad. If you want to check that out, uh, I do have videos on the channel. Make sure to uh, take a moment and look at that. Sup, Savvy Nick and all. Explorer, welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping in and stopping by. Was there ever a mom OS? I've never heard of that. All right, keep on going here. The super key activates the launcher by default. All right, all right. So it doesn't look like you have to hit, was it alt space? I'm probably getting that confused with, there's all sorts of launchers out there. I mean, I've used Spotlight, which is the Mac OS launcher. Uh, then I've used PowerShell, which has its own launcher on Windows. And here in Pop, they have their own launcher. So everybody has different keys, but whatever it was, it wasn't just the super key. Now's the super key, we'll test that out activates the launcher and there's a couple other things I noticed about this one as well that we'll be checking out but I have to say I love launchers they are just so quick because you can do math in them real quick you can launch applications extremely quick you can search for uh, various different things on your computer like text documents and whatnot especially in spotlight which is extremely powerful on Mac uh, a dock Ooh, speaking about Mac looks like They've adopted a doc, says that they pulled their users and out of the user survey, they said that they use dash to dock or dash to panel. 56% of those people said that they use the dock on the bottom. So they're coming through and putting one at the bottom of here. All right, we'll check it out. I don't know if we even have that available yet, but uh, it's an interesting way that they're going. Are you on Arch and X Monad, Nick? Yes, that I am. That is correct. Uh, let's see. Cosmic brings. Let's see. I couldn't. Yeah, this is the interesting part. So they said they have this in settings. I didn't find it in settings. So maybe this is something coming a little later. Uh, but we can see you can put it the position of the dock in different various places. Looks like on the left side where is where it's at uh, normally. But I might be wrong about this. I again I haven't found this in settings yet, even with the uh, install of Cosmic. Um. All right, we'll we'll keep going here. Two workflows: mouse driven and keyboard driven. So, doesn't sound like they really focused in on laptops necessarily. Instead, they've kept uh, kept towards the de uh, well, the desktop experience more than laptop. But all right, that's plenty to check out. Very good. Let's check out Cosmic now. Let me see if I can bring that up. All right, we're bringing it up right now. And if you're just stopping in and stopping by, make sure to smash that like button for me. 
Welcome, welcome, everyone. Say hi in the chat. Nethi, welcome, welcome. Thanks for saying hi. Good to see you. I tried to install elementary OS on my Microsoft laptop too and my keyboard and touch. Yeah, uh, horrible support with uh, the Surface. Is it the Surface laptop too, I assume? But yeah, uh, just the Linux kernel in general, there's a lot of... Recently, there's been improvements. So if you get something with maybe a one of the latest and greatest kernels, you might be you might have better support. And specifically, I think it's uh, that Surface 2 uh, touchpad driver has been updated. So you might want to check that out. Alan Walker, welcome to the stream. Thank you for stopping in and stopping by and saying hi. I have a pathological fear of curves. <laughs> so you're not going to like Zorin, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, Pop OS right in front of us here. This is with Cosmic installed. Uh, what I did, let me show you real quick for those of you who do want to check this out yourselves. Cosmic is available for testing purposes right now. Uh, go over to the GitHub repo at the slash pop dash OS dash Cosmic, not dash slash Cosmic, and you can actually install it. Now it says... Uh, let's see, installation, you can install it this way, but that's only available for 2104 and higher. No, that 2104 is not released, so you'll have to install it from the source. You can still, for as a hint, install these packages through um, aptitude. So apt install this, and then you can install the cosmic from source, the Cosmic Desktop from source, by cloning down the repo, changing into the directory that was created, and building it with make. So just to let you know, that's what I got running. So of course, it's not going to be 100% here. It's still in the works. Moving things back over. All right, let's check things out. So they definitely use the super key now. If I press escape, I get out. If I press the super key, boom, the launcher launches. Awesome. We can do maths in here. So look at that. As soon as you put the equals in, it's assuming you're doing math. So let's do the square root of four, two. Beautiful. I love doing my math and launchers. It makes it so much easy. Good morning, Stephen. Welcome to the stream. Seem to be okay. You said you're a Linux Mint guy. Well, welcome, welcome. As long as you're Linux. We will love to have you here with us. I'm just kidding. We love all operating systems. Let's keep on going by checking out what else they have here. So really, they've had this launcher in the past. This just made it a little easier to search for things. Now, what else is awesome? Okay. They did not have the ability to use your mouse to select various different uh, search results. Now they do. So if I clicked on power, boom, it comes up. Great. I love that makes it much easier to use. Also, another thing I noticed right off the bat is if I'm looking for something like, I don't know, terminal. So we get a whole bunch of other things here, whatever terminals here. You can use the up and down arrows as well as now control and then the number up to nine. But the best part of this is they haven't limited the search results. Before it was limited to only like four things coming back to you, which was just a pain in the butt. Um, why not give you as many choices as possible? Because if it's only going to return like the four top uh, search results, it's kind of annoying. But I'm super glad that they've done this for us. Made it much easier for us to use. So if I launch the terminal, boom, we get the terminal. Notice how the dock completely disappears. So you utilize the entire workspace instead of just the portion that's another nice thing. I know this is been, you can you could do this uh, in GNOME extensions. To me, it's almost like they took some of the stuff from GNOME extensions and just kind of enabled it by default. And honestly, they kind of force you to enable it here with the uh, with the source install. Um, I assume it's going to be uh, enabled by default whenever they do release twenty one point oh four. But it's a nice feature. They showed us this dock here at the bottom. I don't know how to get it down there because I don't have that settings option. So let me just look that up. So we'll go to settings. Let me check this one more time. There was supposed to be a desktop settings and I don't see it. Yeah, it's still not there. 
I've restarted this a couple times trying to get it. I think it's supposed to replace this appearance, but that's at least where it looks like it's going to be. But until we get it, we won't be able to test the dock at the bottom, at least without, you know, completely fumbling around and making it work in a manner that it's not supposed to. Anyways, we'll continue looking through things. Notice at the top left-hand corner, we now have workspaces as well as applications. This is new, not really available in GNOME and not even in GNOME 40. It's interesting how they built this. It's like they didn't expect GNOME 40 to come out because um, I don't know what they've taken from it and what they've left. Another thing I notice is the workspaces is now on this side closest to the dock. So on the left hand side, I wonder if we'll have the ability to move that around as well. I'm not sure about that. Of course, the animations have been kind of updated. Can't really see them here. Things happen a little bit too fast. Let's see. The pop shop, I don't think. Yeah, pop shop's normal. Everything launches pretty much normally. But here's one way to launch your applications, much like the old way. But you can also, again, launch them from the top or just your workspaces. This is on the left-hand side, again, like I said. And we can move stuff around. So this is GNOME 3.38 or above based. Well, it's not bad. I think they've done cooler stuff in the past, like with the tiling windows. <laughs> uh, you know, there and, and it's still in development, so you can't take much away from it. I was actually kind of excited to try the dock at the bottom, but I can't seem to do that. And I don't know what I'm missing. I know I'm missing this multi-monitors add-on, but I don't have multi-monitors, so I would doubt that would help me any. And then under the Ubuntu dock, that's what they're actually using for this docking station on the other side. So let's see if we do anything with dock if no. That's the only extensions I see. Maybe they got an app called GNOME. Let's see. Tweaks? What if they have tweaks? Nope. Well, that's okay. Let's see if we've missed anything to check out real quick. So definitely that desktop in the settings is missing. Like I said here, it should be underneath what seems to be Bluetooth. Currently, appearance is there, and I don't see appearance anywhere else. So that makes me think desktop is going to become appearance. Still not there though, or I'm just missing it. Who knows? That's probably the case. I, was, I wanted to check out how this looked, this layout with the dock, but it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to today. All right. Well, that's really it for Cosmic, unless you have something you want me to check out real quick here in the Cosmic desktop version of Pop! OS I've installed. What dock did they mention? So they, they mentioned um, they're using the Ubuntu dock is really what they're using. You can see it by what, what has to be installed. So they're using a, the Ubuntu dock GNOME extension and they're putting it at the, uh, they're also a, giving you a floating dock option on the bottom of the screen if you want it, but that's not available to actually select at the moment, at least not for me. Exactly. It is really just the theme of GNOME. And I think a lot of people have been stating that this is some revolutionary new desktop environment. It's not. System76 tells you directly on their blog post it's not. It's it's really just extensions that they've added on that they've thought will help users use their uh, operating system a little better, their, their Linux distribution. Pop OS. So it's really System 76's way of giving you a better desktop experiences installing. Uh, yes, they do have tiling. That's correct. Uh, that was with their, uh, I think ever since 20.04, they added in the uh, pop shell with tiling. You can turn that on and off. And 
it's nice. I really do enjoy using that. Yeah. Lev, I think that's a that's a very nice um nice way of putting that. I think I they Pop, Pop OS has always surprised me. I love Pop OS myself. It's one of my top three uh, Linux distributions. I do really enjoy letting people know about it, especially beginners. Again, I'm just a big fan. I suggest it to all different you know, levels of Linux knowledge users, Linux users with different knowledge bases, I should say, from beginner to advanced. I mean, it's it's great. Easy to install, easy to use, very well developed, a little better at, uh, I personally like it a little better than Ubuntu, even though it's heavily based on Ubuntu, but we'll see how that goes. I'm excited. Nonetheless, nonetheless. All right. Well, that's it for Pop and the new Cosmic Desktop. We'll move right along. But before we do, take a moment, if you haven't already, smash that like button for me as we get on to the next topic and welcome everyone to the Linux news segment. If you want to follow along, I do these on Saturdays as much as I can. And make sure not to miss one by subscribing below and hitting that notification bell so you can get more information about Linux. Next thing we'll talk about is really, um, well... Rust, Rust in the GNOME kernel. That's right. So let's read some more lore here on the kernel.org website from, well, a, a Rust developer, really. I'm the only one who smacked the line. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for doing that, Callie. Appreciate it. Appreciate you following along. So here's a post from, well, these are really, I think, emails back and forth from people or maybe posts on threads. It all depends uh, what you're looking at. But really, it's it's a cry <laughs> to uh, people maintaining the Linux kernel about how and why they should adapt more Rust into the Linux kernel. Uh, and Let's see, it is, like they say, a fairly long letter. It's interesting because they try explaining why Rust would be so important to put into the kernel and start using it as another uh, language instead of mainly C. So they kind of go back and forth on the various different things. So they have a goal section, why to use Rust. And we can read some of these if you want, but uh, why not to use Rust? So this is always nice to see. I like when developers and just people in general not only cover the reasons why to do something, but why not? Why, why, why might it not make any sense to use it for a particular project or a particular line of work? It just uh, makes you think that they actually did a little bit more... Um, they spent a little bit more time thinking about the odds and ends and how everything gets affected. Hey there, Oshank. Welcome to this stream. Thank you for stopping in and stopping by. Hey, Savvy. Appreciate you saying hi. Uh, we'll go down. So let's talk a little bit about why not first, and then we'll talk about why. But for uh, those of you who are not familiar with Rust, Rust is a program programming language. It probably... Uh, took hold in 2015, 2016. Don't quote me on that exactly, but that's about when it was introduced. A fairly nice performance-based uh, programming language uh, which can compete against uh, some of the lower level access that C and C++ has. Um, a great contender, but of course C and C++ have over 40 years of development under the hood and uh, are, are available in so many production environments. So a lot of rewrite has to happen in order to import things uh, from other programming languages, including Rust. So Rust for Linux is a project. As it says here, the goal of the project is to add support for the Rust language into the Linux kernel. 
So for those of you who are interested in this type of support with another programming language into the kernel, check it out. This repository contains the work that will eventually be submitted and reviewed by the maintainers of the Linux kernel. So mainly Miguel here, Oyeda, it seems like, is maintaining a lot of this stuff, adding merges. Uh, you can check out all the different things that they've been working on. But now that you kind of know what this is and who we're talking about, we can continue on by reading why not. Today I caught it live. Awesome. Hi there. Welcome, Elite Hacker. Glad you got to catch it live. Obrad, hello there. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for stopping in and stopping by. This one's going a little bit over. Hopefully no one's getting bored quite yet. Uh, let's talk about why not. So Rust, also the disadvantages compared to C in the context of the Linux kernel. The many years of effort and tooling for C around the kernel, including compiler plugins, sanitizers, I don't know how to pronounce that, lock, depth, sparse. However, this will likely improve with Rust usage in kernel grows over time. So they're just saying there's been a lot of development for C, so it's hard to, you know, slowly build stuff that's going to replace it because there's millions of lines of code out there. Why reinvent the wheel? Single implementation based on LLVM. There are third-party efforts underway to fix this, such as GCC front end, a Rust C back end, Based, okay, this is getting a little bit uh, much. Not standardized, that's a big one. While it is not clear whether standardization would be beneficial for the kernel, several points minimize this issue. In any case, the Rust stability promise, the extensive documentation, WIP references, slower compilation in general due to more complex features and limitations of the current compiler. So that's basically as the compiler gets, you know, more and more developed inside of Rust. Of course, it's only, what do we say, maybe five or six years old. It's gonna get better. It's gonna get more performance-based. It's gonna get faster at compilation. Uh, fixes are gonna be made. So that's that's a good, that's a why not. That's a big why not right now because C's, again, had 40 years, over 40 years. C++ is about 40 years. C, C might be even 50. Uh, well, hello, Phil. Welcome to the stream. What's the configuration? So uh, what I'm currently using right now is Arch Linux with uh, an X monad setup uh, using, well, it's really sporting the config and dot files from Xvara from uh, our Discord channel. Shout out to Xvara for creating this beautiful uh, X monad setup. You can check it out on both Reddit as well as on my channel, I do show off how to install this uh, with a minimal version of Arch Linux. All right, at the present time, we are requiring nightly features. That is, features are not available in a stable compil compiler. Nevertheless, we aim to remove this restriction within a year. Uh, bigger than needed text currently due to unused parts from the core, alloc, Rust standard libraries. We plan to address this over time. Most of the disadvantages arrive from the fact that Rust is much younger. Of course, like I was saying, it doesn't have the 40 to 50 years of exposure. Uh, but however, they do believe that Rust is likely to become an important part of the systems programming just as C has been during the last decades. And so most of these issues will be reduced in a number of industries. So mainly they just need more time. That's their argument for why not right now is because it's just not proven quite as much as, well, C. Well, how can you be more proven than C when you've had 40 to 50 years? Uh, so why Rust? Let's hear about that portion of it. Rust is a systems programming language that, uh, so again, like I mentioned before, a low level uh, based programming language that uh, really accesses the, uh, I assume, assembly directly uh, after being compiled. So no extra layers of abstraction there uh, that brings several keys of key advantages over C in the context of the Linux kernel. No undefined behavior in a safe subset, including memory safety and absence of data races. So uh, the nice thing about Rust compared to C is there is some form of memory management allows you to, um, well, it basically just protects against memory leaks. And uh, really the other thing is race conditions. So with the way Rust is 
developed. It just has stricter means of checking for those types of things and rules for it so they can't inherently happen because of it. Now, of course, I'm not a Rust expert by any means. I, I don't program in Rust. Actually, C and C++ are uh, more of my, my way. But it's interesting to see this because Rust is gaining more and more uh, traction. If you want to play an open source game available to anyone and everyone, there is Velerin. Check out my streams on Sundays playing Velerin. Of course, it's developed in Rust, available on Linux, available on Windows, Mac OS. If you're coming from there, you can also download it there. Uh, free and open source. Can't get any better than that. And it's really fun. It's a voxel type game, kind of like uh, the closest thing you can base it on is uh, Minecraft or Cube World, if anyone's familiar with that. Let's keep going down the list. Stricter type system for further reduction of logic errors, a clear distinction between safe and unsafe code, featureful language, some types, pattern matching, generics, Ray2, uh, lifetime shared and exclusive references, modules, and visibility, powerful, hygienic, and procedural macros. A lot of, lot of vocabulary there. <laughs> uh, extensive freestanding Standard library, vocabulary types such as result and option iterators, formatting, pinning, checked, saturating, wrapping, integer, arithmetic, etc. Integrated out of the box tooling, documentation generator format. Okay, they're using a lot of complicated words that we're just not going to be familiar with at this point. But uh, mainly the arguments are made here for why Rust is great for the Linux kernel and why some tools, drivers, and just the general operating system would be really nice to start at least introducing some Rust. And you can look at this awesome blog post, sorry, not blog post, post in general from Miguel Oyeda on the kernel.org website. You can see this was an email back and forth between some people. Um, Linus also has uh, some little concerns about it, but they're definitely not um, not something to keep Rust from being able to be introduced in the Linux kernel and being support by the Linux kernel. You can see this was to Linus themselves and Greg. If you're interested in checking out more information about this, definitely take a look. I'll put a link in the description below. All right, well, I appreciate everybody stopping in and stopping by today to watch this stream. It's been a fun one. If we don't have any questions or comments, we'll move on to ending things here today. I remember it from Reddit. It's beautiful though. It absolutely is, Phil. I'm in complete agreement with you there. Nikhil, welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping in and stopping by. I just realized you were stopping here. Uh, trying to install Arch again. Great, Phil. I'm stuck on Python currently. There's so many languages out there. Python's a great one to start with for sure. So I wish you the best in your journeys on that one. All right. Well, this is Savvy Nick signing in and signing out and maybe signing in next week. Either way, make sure to subscribe below and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching live.